and a conference in Aberdeen um, for the Battle of Harlow. Now, it's the 600th anniversary of the Battle of Harlow, which um, took place just outside Inverurie, and um, there's a, quite a handsome memorial there. But the um, 24th of July is the anniversary of the battle, so they didn't want to actually clash with all the events that so was going to be on, so there's going to be quite a lot happening around about that time. But, um, um, I thought I'd compose this because I was playing at a wee concert in the Toon House in Aberdeen and um, we were at the, the Seven Incorporated Trades of Aberdeen in this building just down to um, Hobart Junction and it's a fairly ugly building I have to say it's, it's near the best 60s architecture but once you get inside they've got some incredible stuff it's well worth going in to see and um, they have the sword of oh, um, Sir Alexander Davidson who was Lord Provost at Aberdeen and he is the only man, the only Aberdeen provost who died defending his city in 1411. And he died at the Battle of Harlow. And they've got his sword and they've got some of the banners, two of the banners that were apparently um, carried by the Burgesses of Aberdeen on the day of the battle. And um, it was apparently one of the most bloody Scottish battles. Started in the morning, um, lasted all day, and there was virtually no tactics, they just set to it. And, <laughs> Huge chunks of each other for the whole day. The Lord of the Isles, um, through his marriage, claimed the rights to the, the Elder of Ross, which had become vacant. And uh, they, they'd given it to the king, you know, the king's relations, one of the Stuarts, and he hadn't thought too kindly about this, so he went on the wrong page. Uh, he sucked in, uh, Inverness and Dingwall, burnt them, and he thought he would head over to Aberdeen and lay waste to the northeast and his wife. So the reckon there was, put, there was various figures, but the reckon there was about could have been as much as 10,000 Islesmen. So there was McDonald's, McLean's, um, McLeod's, Cameron's, came over. And um, it was all the big, the, the big families to the, the northeast set out to, to stop them. Now they were, they weren't as well armed, sorry, the, the Highlanders weren't as well armed, though they were a lesser number, the, the, the force to the northeast were very heavily armed at the kind of chivalry kind of knights in the armour and um, it was quite a brutal affair and I reckon there was, wasn't was a family in the North East didn't it suffer some kind of loss so the, there was the Forbuses, there was the Irvins, there was a, a Homeric duel between um, Red, Sir Her, Red Hector McLean of the battles who was the champion of the Lord of the Isles' army and, and Irvin and Drum and they set teeth to each other and they both died of their wounds at the end of the day. And um, 100 years later, they exchanged swords to sort of bury the bad blood between the two families. So that'll be the happening later this year as well. So I wrote a tune that's called Blood in the Geary, which is a very pleasant title. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's a kind of a, a lament kind of thing, actually. Mm -hmm. 